Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. Welcome back to another live show. Uh, if you're watching this at approximately 4:46 p.m. New York City time, then this is a live show, meaning that when you're watching this video, if you go to the comments and you type something that I can read it in real time and have the opportunity to respond in real time. So without further ado, uh, what we need to do is uh, there you are. That's Sean Coonery, the enormous Maine Coon Cat. Evening from the MK, well, uh, from the UK rather. Uh, welcome, MC Drone. I see a lot of people trickling in here. We got Sean Coonery's attention. He said, "I hear a live show." <laughs> so he came in. Uh, the studio is kind of a mess. Uh, working on a few projects, so the the background there is is really messy. So I apologize for that. Uh, JC10, hi from Mexico. Hello, Ola. Um, yeah, this shows about everything. You know, we talk about cameras. We can talk about drones. We can talk about uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, IV Gamers eighty nine says salutes Irish. Viva la vida. Very cool. Joseph says hi. Can't stay long working. Um, Sean Coonery. There you are. So yeah, uh, got a lot of people trickling in. You know, I don't know what y'all are excited about, but you know, I've been looking at, uh, actually, I, I read a lot of press releases and this, that, and the other, and it's it's really exciting what GoPro is about to bring to the table, and I hope they don't fail like they unfortunately did with the, uh, uh, with the GoPro Karma drone, but it looks like they may execute well with GoPro Hero 6. I've had a lot of people ask me questions about Hero 6, and then also the GoPro Fusion which could potentially be a game changer for GoPro if they execute well and if third-party editing such as Final Cut Pro 10, etc., keep up with the technology because in theory GoPro Fusion will be able to film a spherical video, very small camera, but a spherical video that for the first time in 360 spherical may be of acceptable quality and that's the problem we've had now unless you're getting the multi-thousand dollar rigs that uh, that are able to capture 1080p or better in in spherical then it's been something that hasn't been that exciting for two so for so many people but i'm holding this camera uh, a7r2 obviously still my favorite camera on the market to be as capable as it is it's not uh it's not you know too big or too heavy and if, if you watch my videos you know that I'm obsessed with travel size and travel weight if it's too big and it's too heavy it's it's not interesting for me so uh, yeah I got a lot of questions coming in here uh, JC says my big question Mavic Pro combo Phantom 4 advanced or Phantom 4 advanced well you know I, as, as I've mentioned the uh, Phantom 4 is currently currently my favorite drone, and I'll I'll kind of summarize why. Uh, number one, the intro to this video and the intro to a lot of my videos I filmed with the Phantom 4 in 4K 30 frames per second. It just works, and it just works well. The video is very the image quality is good, uh, the video stability is good, and it's very horizontal with the horizon. So I've been very impressed with the Phantom 4. To add to that. There's not an annoying, at least with the current model Phantom 4, there's not an annoying tap to focus requirement. And that's something with the Mavic Pro, you know, aside from the slightly lesser video quality. Whoa, whoa, knocked tripod over. Sean Coonery did. Whoa, whoa, got to be careful in the studio. Um, yeah, he knocked my tripod over. That was, he said he's mad. Um. Yeah, between those two, I would definitely go with the Phantom 4. Check out my website, irixsky.com, and go to my store link, and you can find all the drones there. I mean, ultimately, you know, it's up to what you're looking for, but between those two, I would definitely go with the Phantom 4. Now, the, the Mavic does have some advantages. Smaller travel size, smaller travel weight. But if you're in it for the better video quality, the better photo quality, I would go with the Phantom 4. But ultimately, if you're not in a rush, I would wait to see what DJI releases next because I have high hopes for both the Mavic Pro 2 and also the Phantom 5. And also keep in mind, 
Uh, now, oh, uh, you were talking about Phantom 4 Advance. Phantom 4 Advance will top out at 2.7K. So if you're wanting to film in 4K, in that scenario, the uh, the Mavic would win because the Mavic does 4K. The Phantom 4 Advance does not do 4K. Uh, Adam says, I really don't want to purchase a Spark because I'm not a giant fan, but I think the Spark might be the best choice for my Virgin Island trip. It's backpack worthy. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, Virgin Island is a very nice place, by the way. It's uh, it's definitely easier to travel with from a size and weight perspective. But you know, to be frank, if I was going to go somewhere and portability was a concern between the Spark and the Mavic Pro, I would definitely go Mavic Pro because I'm going to get better video quality, better video stability, and obviously fly in line of sight to be safe and responsible, uh, but still get better range and better battery life with the Mavic Pro. Uh, IVR Gamer says, anything about any drone? Well, you know, as I mentioned previously, to, to meet those uh, holiday shopping delivery demands, it only makes sense that we should see, my, my expectation is to see an, hear, an announce, excuse me, hear an announcement this month during August of 2017. Because if they're going to hit, uh, if they're going to be able to meet customers' demands, you know, they're not really that concerned about the buzz because DJI already knows that they release something new that people are already going to be excited about it. But to be able to get it to all the distribution points, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to, have to hurry and, and execute. So, you know, I completely believe that this month we'll hopefully hear uh, at least a Mavic Pro 2, but maybe a Phantom, uh, Phantom 5 as well. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Sir Sean Cunery is here. He is. He knocked over the tripod. Uh, Joseph says, looking forward to GoPro 360 camera. Any idea on the price? Talking about the GoPro Fusion, uh, the GoPro 360 spherical camera. You know, I haven't seen anything in regards to price yet, but my gut would tell me below or around $500 US would be a good, in, in my opinion, an educated guess. Because I don't think GoPro can really, uh, I don't think they need to price themselves out of the uh, of the action camera consumer realm, and it's it's going to be interesting to see where that uh, you know which price point that hits at, and I'm also excited to see Apple's reaction. You know, Apple getting in with the new uh, iMac Pro that's slated that's scheduled to release in December of 2017. It's going to be interesting to see how how quickly Apple's video editing software evolves to make. Uh, uh, to make spherical 360 degree content editing more user friendly because if you've ever used a Mac you know if it's iMovie whether it's iMovie or Final Cut Pro 10 you probably found that the editing interface it's very what you see is what you get you know it's it's not a lot of there's not a lot of guesswork I mean sure you can fine tune your video edits but for the most part there's not a lot of guesswork so you know with that being the case I'm hoping to see a user friendly VR uh, 360 degree spherical by the way everybody's out there VR virtual reality 360 degree spherical all of those words mean the same thing they're referring to you know a camera that captures uh, captures video that can be played back in 360 degree and you can check out my videos check out my Facebook fan page I've got a lot that I filmed in 360 not with a GoPro uh, obviously I don't have the GoPro yet but I did. I did film with it with another camera, and I mean it's good proof of concept. It shows you what 360 looks like. Uh, the video quality is definitely not excellent yet. I mean it's it, because it is in spherical. It's kind of degraded, but uh, that's why I'm excited about GoPro's offering because GoPro is still the action camera leader, and it brings brings one to wonder, you know what. Uh, What's causing GoPro to take so long? And I'm about to about to get a link here to this camera. Let's see. Yeah, this thing right here. And it says it'll do 4K 60 frames per second already, which is kind of insane. Um I'll post it on my website in a little bit, but it's a 4K 60 camera. Mike says, brand new to the drone hobby. 
I just wanted to thank you for all the videos on the Phantom 3 Professional. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's it's a great hobby, and uh, it's it, you know it's something that you know always keep in mind that when you're enjoying the hobby to to put everything into a positive spotlight because if we don't band together as fellow drone evangelists and spread the positive message of safe and responsible drone use, this hobby may cease to exist, and and that would be horrible because we wouldn't be able to to go out and have a good time with the drone. Uh, Mark, uh, what drone are you talking about? Uh, we're talking. Are you talking about the 360 spherical? I was for that for that uh, conversation. I was referring to a new GoPro camera that's coming out called a GoPro Fusion. Now, whether or not that'll be able to be mounted to a drone, uh, that's to be determined. But you know, one would think that if GoPro is serious about trying to develop a uh, an acceptable presence within the drone realm that they would need to they would need to innovate and as far as innovation is concerned with DJI we have not yet seen a DJI drone with a 360 degree spherical camera so let's, let's let's step back and think about this what if GoPro releases not only their their GoPro fusion camera which is 360 degree spherical camera but what if they immediately release a new drone that's for that 360 degree spherical camera I mean yeah they've got GoPro Karma but you know let's let's think about this number one they had a bad name GoPro Karma 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 bit them you know they uh, <laughs> that's that's probably the the biggest that or the that's probably even a bigger pain point for GoPro than the original hero session was so what I think GoPro would do so GoPro if you're out there listening to this if you're smart, what you'll do, number one, you'll call me up and you'll say, hey, you know, Irik's guy had this idea, so, you know, we're going to we're gonna send him uh, send him something and uh, credit him for the idea and put him in our commercials. But beyond that, you know, I think what would be great is if GoPro just says, hey, GoPro Karma, bad name, bad product, bad execution. We're a great company. We've always released great stuff. We have a very big fan base but we failed with karma. You know, put out a new drone, give it a normal sounding name, don't call it karma, don't call it anything that's gonna jinx you, and come out with a drone that's more portable and something that'll fly with your uh, GoPro, uh, with the GoPro Fusion 360 degree spherical camera, and now you've created what could potentially become an industry leader. DJI does not have a 360 degree spherical camera on a drone yet. A company called Alltail Robotics was touting it at CES, Consumer Electronics Show this year, but they failed to execute. So if you're the first player to the table with a 360 degree spherical uh, drone camera, especially on the cusp of Apple releasing their new iMac Pro in December that's geared towards v VR, 360 degree spherical video editing, it would only seem to make sense that one of the big players like a GoPro or like a DJI or you know, new company that hasn't even created a drone yet like Apple or, or Google or Microsoft why wouldn't they want to get out in the playing field? Why wouldn't they want to be first? Why wouldn't they want to saturate the market with their product? It's just crazy. Uh, Scotty says, can't find a fix. Have Phantom 3. Sometimes when I move left and right, the camera moves with the Phantom. And it is not level. It's in the right mode. Have you had this happen? Do, do you do calibration? Uh, actually, and I'm going to see if I've got a link to... A poster. I've got a ton of blog posts because I used to fly uh, the Phantom. The Phantom. I've I've flown Phantom One, Phantom Two, Phantom Two Vision Plus, Phantom Three Pro, Phantom Four, Phantom Four Pro, Mavic Pro, and DJI Spark. But I've got a uh, I've got a blog post. Let me see if I can find this here. And it's on my website. Yeah, just go to my website, irixsky.com, and type in Tilted Horizon Fix, and it'll come up with a post. I'm going to type this in. Tilted Horizon Fix. Now, I made my entire website searchable, so you can just go to it, search Tilted Horizon Fix, and you'll find a tutorial. Actually, this is a post that I'd released... 
I've got a new website that I've created now, but I think originally I had posted this. Well, I'll tell you exactly. Hold on. Yeah, I posted this April the 6th, April the 4th of 2016. So, you know, it's, it's somewhat current information, but those are the steps that I went through when I was encountering, uh, you know, the, the tilted horizon or the candid camera, whatever you want to call it, where you're looking at the video and it looks like the drone's flying at an angle and it shouldn't be. So, you know, maybe that'll provide some useful clues. And I've got some other posts on there. Feel free to check out my blog. Uh, only, oh, only happens when you're moving. I know how to fix horizon. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a different animal. I've never, if my, if my horizon was tilted, it, uh, it was, you know, it was present from takeoff throughout the flight. So I've never encountered it to where it was, where it would only happen when the phantom was flying, when the phantom was in motion. So, uh, just out of curiosity, I wonder if you fly backwards versus forward, does that seem to, uh, does that seem to create a different effect? Is, is the, is the horizon still tilted? Park says, love the unique H Typhoon. I tried that drone. That's cool. You like it. It looked cool from a design perspective. And I mean, I don't know, man. I, I had a, I don't want to say anything bad, but I had a bad experience with mine. You can check out my field test videos. And uh, I wanted more. But that's cool. Maybe they've maybe they fixed their, their problems. I had a bad micro SD card slot on my controller. And my camera quality was... It was it was horrible. I mean, it was absolutely terrible. Uh, Sky High Videography says hi. Uh, welcome aboard, Sky High. Again, everybody watching this now at approximately 5.02 p.m. New York City time. Uh, this is a live show, so all your comments that you're typing beside the YouTube video, I can read them in real time, and that's what I'm responding to face on video. And after this live show concludes, you can go to irixsky.com. You can watch this and all my other previously recorded episodes, too. Uh, TCTC says, Hi, Irix guy. Have you read about the new L16 camera coming out later this year? 16 lenses. Supposed to be the first step in making the DSLR obsolete. Could be interesting. I have not. Uh, but I did hear... Let me see. L16. L16 l16 i'm going to research that offline that thanks for thanks for sharing that l16 cool 52 plus megapixel resolution that is crazy now that looks cool you got my interest i'm going to check that out um there's also an and I didn't discover this, but it was something I, I found on the Google search. Allegedly, there is a, uh, there's a patent that Sony's put out which could suggest a new mount for a lens. So does that mean that, that, uh, that Sony may be about to enter the medium format camera arena? I, honestly, I hope they don't because I, wanna, I want them to stick with full-frame E-mount because that's what I use with the A7R2 and that's what all my lenses are right now are full frame E-mount and uh, you know sure in the future when they when they release a uh, you know an upgrade to the A7R2 hopefully the A7R3 you know I'll probably upgrade the camera body but I can keep all the glass and continue to use it and that's uh, Greenock Drone Guy says hi from Greenock Scotland welcome board uh, Fred says any DJI announcements yet on a new drone? None that I've seen or heard. Uh, but my assumption is that, uh, you know, again, I completely expect Mavic Pro 2 and or Phantom 5 to hit here in, uh, here in August of 2017. You know, if they want to get it out there for the 2017 holiday shopping season, they need to get off their tail and get to it. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that hopefully they've been doing that. They're just keeping their keeping their stuff quiet see what other people say first uh, TCTC says Business Week and Wired are loving the uh, the uh, L16 it's a small company called Light that makes it yeah I'm lo I looked at their I pulled their website up in uh, in another uh, another window I'm looking at it right now I mean that's 
52 plus megapixel. I mean, that's really cool. Four K video, focal lengths at full frame equivalent, huh? Yeah, that's uh, it. It looks interesting on paper. It really does. I've thanks for sharing that because I mean I'd never heard of it. TC TC says thanks for your great shows. Well, thanks for sharing stuff like that because that's what makes the shows great. Because this, I mean, this is a show for. For everyone, it's not just uh, it's not just uh, the show that I put on. I mean, I do my videos on my by myself, but you know, for a live show, that's what it's all about. You know, getting the audience engaged and and uh, talking about cool stuff like that, like you just mentioned, the L16. Uh, Pyro Drone says Phantom 5 6K video. Well, I think it's highly plausible that Phantom 5 would be at least 5.2K, just based upon what we're seeing with with other technologies. And obviously the advantage to that would be so that people could record, you know, a larger physical canvas and still shrink that video down to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K Ultra HD, you know, and, and maybe perform some uh, some uh, virtual zooming in post, in post-production and not losing 4K video quality because it was filmed at a greater le- resolution. So I think that would be really cool. Uh, you know, maybe even 8K. I mean, obviously, we're not filming an 8K to publish to a to an 8K television or something like that yet, because it's it's still premature to do that. But for cropping, I mean, I I would think the 5.2K, 6K, or 8K could be highly uh, plausible. So, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what they put camera wise on the Phantom 5 and camera wise on the Mavic Pro 2. As it's, it's I mean it's this year for drones could be you know we're out of the we're out of the newbie phase. So you know we're out of the you know everything's super new, it's it's super finicky. You know things are getting more refined now with this technology. So now it's not oh man that's cool that drone can fly. And oh man that's cool it's got a gimbal on it. But now it's refining what's already great, you know, making, uh, you know, making it a better overall experience, you know, better battery life, better camera, better enhanced portability. So that's what it's all about. If you don't have it with you, if it's too cumbersome to carry, you're probably not going to film because you're probably not going to have the drone with you. But if it's convenient to carry along with other stuff, man, we're really going to see this stuff catch on like wildfire. And hopefully. Uh, you know, again, hopefully this hobby continues to exist because there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of people out there that that don't know how to fly a drone and they're misusing them. Uh, Fred says, "I don't understand how the the Solo 3DR is still very expensive and still available at the store." Yeah, that's uh, well. That all I got to say about that is that you know that that drone. You know, just just to summarize it, the marketing they had a good marketing thing. They had all the monkeys running around and that sort of stuff looked pretty cool, and they created the perception that it was a GoPro drone, and that was partially true from the standpoint that they had some special rights to use certain GoPro technologies to communicate with the GoPro camera, but it was not the GoPro drone. And obviously that was confirmed when GoPro released their own drone, and it was called the GoPro Karma. And the GoPro drone was not called 3DR Solo. So, you know, that was one of those, I would say, unfortunate releases that, you know, we've got we've got this big player right now. We've got DJI, and they have DJI has not been dethroned. I mean, DJI is the leader of the pack. And they're not just the leader of the pack. I mean, they're... You know, they're several hundred miles ahead of everyone else. So it's, it's going to take someone with a big budget. It's going to take someone with quick execution, quick and quality execution. I must add that. Because we've seen a lot of people, they release stuff quickly, but the quality's not there. And the quality's not there. It doesn't matter who's 
first up to bat you know who's who's got their drone out there on the table selling it you know if it's not quality just because they got it there before the competitor doesn't mean anything uh adam says i know i've been pounding you with questions i really appreciate your advice are the beaches and virgin islands cool with drone flying have you ever encountered any issues there you know again i'm not a lawyer i'm not part of law enforcement so what i would encourage you to do is check with uh you know check check the local regulations and see what they may be i mean regulations constantly change uh what i would say is that you know at least now if you know in the united states for example there's a lot of places that are now off limits and a lot of those places include parks so you know there is a big park uh, especially if you're on st john there's a big park there so you know that's likely an area that's likely off off limits so you know check with the check with the local authorities down there to be sure because you know you don't want to you don't want to create a potentially international incident because that could be uh, uh that could be catastrophic for the perception of of drone hob- hobbyists across the world but you know that being said i mean there's a lot of uh have you been to the virgin islands before if if you haven't there's there's some things i would re- strongly recommend and and one of those would be to take a passport assuming you're a u.s citizen take a passport and get on a ferry one day and it'll probably only runs twice a week but take a ferry over to virgin gorda uh, which is in the british virgin islands that's a really cool place and also take a ferry over to uh, you could actually take the ferry over to yost van dyke which is a which is another british virgin island you know check the check the local uh policies but those places are really neat and there's an island if you go to yost van dyke that's just right off of it it's called sandy spit and there's nothing on it it's just a piece of sand and uh but you'd have to get there by boat so you know you may want to look into uh you may want to look into a charter and let me get a website link there's this there's this outfit and they go out of st john i highly recommend them and you can actually check out my review on TripAdvisor that i that i left for them the original captain unfortunately he he passed away but it's in new hands now so my expectation is that the boat and all that's probably just as awesome and the reviews are awesome but check out uh check this out again you probably want to email and call ahead palm tree charters and tell them that irix guy referred you but palm tree charters had a really good experience what i would recommend with them they let you set your own itinerary so if you're going to go to virgin gorda for what i would do for virgin gorda i would just take st john people ferry your cheapest way to get over there take the early morning people ferry and then take the latest one in the afternoon back and that'll give you a, a big chunk of the entire day to go out and explore virgin gorda you know hit up the bass hit up devil's bay um that's that's just a short taxi ride from the ferry dock where you'll where you'll hit on virgin gorda and for for Yos Van Dyke, where Soggy Dollar Bar, Foxy's, and all of that fun stuff is, if you want to spend an entire day, I would take the People Ferry to uh, to Yost Van Dyke. It's going to be a lot less expensive, and uh, and it's it's a uh, it's just a really cool place. Everybody there's really nice, and I I would recommend that. But for the Palm Tree Charters, what I would do is I would. Uh, you know plot your course what i would hit up a palm tree charters i would hit up norman island which is where uh there's a place there called pirates bite really cool place to get a drink there's the willie t it's this pirate ship in the water off of norman island and they've got really good uh their their uh seared yellowfin tuna is phenomenal you just order it on the boat the drinks at uh at pirates bite are amazing and uh it's uh yeah, I would I would hit up if you did palm tree charters. I would hit up Norman Island. I would hit up the Indians for snorkeling, and then I would take I would have them take you to Sandy Spit to end the day. And uh, Ron says I was on Yost Van Dyke in January and flew the Phantom Four all over White Bay and Great Harbor. White Bay, by the way, guys, that's where uh, that's the main beach there where Soggy Dollar Bar is. And Ron says I stayed on Yost Van Dyke two weeks last January. Been to the Willie boat and been to the Indians. Very cool. Where'd you stay? Did you stay at uh, on on Yost? Did you stay in in the rentals at at Soggy or where where on the island did you stay? Hmm. 
Oh, White Bay Villas. Very cool. Yeah, that's, that's on my list, man. I thought about that, and then also uh, something else down there would be cool is the... What's the name of the company? It's called uh, The Moorings, the uh, or Sunsail. You know, rent rent a sailboat and just moor it up out there. That'd be a cool way to do the week to do a few weeks down there. Yeah, two weeks. That's a good amount of time, man. That's a way to do it. Uh, Fred says, anyone know of a good drone weather app for ISO? Uh. You know, I don't. I use, for weather, for weather app, I use this app called uh, My Radar. And I've enjoyed using it on the iPhone. But I've never, I mean, normally for drone flights, I use my anemometer. that I hold my hand, check the wind speed, but... Yeah, we got... Uh, Tons of stuff. I mean, tons of stuff to look forward to here. So, hey, Sean Coonery. Sean Coonery. He said he's going to come over here and talk to y'all. Hey. Hey, Sean Coonery. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. He doesn't want to come over here. He's, he's ignoring me. Hey, Sean Coonery. He's mad because he knocked the tripod over. He's extremely upset. I'm just glad he didn't hurt himself or break the tripod. Uh, Ron says, The first time I found your channel was when I was doing research for Jos Van Dyke. And there was a video of you flying Phantom at Soggy. Yeah, that was that was a Phantom 1, man. The Phantom 1 without, uh, without even a gimbal on it. Uh, Adam says, We'll do Irix. Never look forward to anything so much in my life. We are, we are taking most of your advice, except we are staying in a nice hotel in St. Thomas. I bet you're staying at, uh, was it Morningstar or... Yeah, St. Thomas is great, but, you know, my best advice, uh, you know, for the, for the rental car, I would definitely on St. Thomas. It's just right there. They'll pick you up at the airport. It's called, uh, yeah, the Marriott. Yeah, Marriott, Mor Morningstar Beach. That place is awesome. But go to Discount. It's not Discount Rental Car, but it's Discount Car VI. And you can rent a you can rent a uh, you can rent a Jeep there. They pick you up at the airport and then they return you to the airport in a Jeep. And you can ferry that Jeep over to St. John on the car ferry. That's the best way to do it. And don't do the round trip tickets on the car ferry because if you do that. Then when you return from St. John in the evening with your Jeep, you're going to be limited to uh, to a particular ferry operator. There's multi multiple companies that operate ferries. So just get one way, and then that way when you pull up to the uh, to the uh, the car ferry line to get on a ferry back, you can get what, whichever operator. You don't have to stick with the one that you bought round trip for because I can get sticky. Uh, Fred says, any news on an iPhone 8 release yet? Well, I've heard a lot of speculation, and, you know, again, I, ex I completely expect first part of first quarter of next year. I don't know if we're going to get one this year. I think it's probably going to be first quarter of next year for the iPhone 8, but I may be wrong. And I think it's going to be radically different. Uh, Green Hawk Drone Guy says, what's your favorite drone to date? Uh, it's Phantom 4. You know, the Phantom 4 is, uh, is again, no tap to focus, and it's consistently excellent 4K video uh, stability and image quality. No complaints. My intro to this live show was filmed with Phantom 4. Favorite drone to date, Phantom 4. Uh, Adam says, we're taking a cab so we can do some drinking. Hope cabs are good. Well... The cabs, I'll tell you, the cabs on Virgin Gorda are really good. When you when you take the people ferry over there, you get off and basically get in the truck, back of a truck, and they've got seats on the side of the truck to drive you around. Um, I've never taken a car, I've never taken a cab on uh, on St. John or St. Thomas, but that's just because I rented the Jeep and I just drove it everywhere, and I you know I had all my stuff and and didn't have to. Didn't have to worry about getting in and out of a cab. But to answer your question, there's a lot of cabs on um, 
on both islands, but you know, pay attention to the cruise ship schedule. You know, go to the website, see which cruise ships are in port and which days are going to be there because more than likely the days that cruise ships are in port, you're going to find it a lot more challenging to get a cab. You know, it's not like it's not like New York where you just go out in the corners like, "Hey cabby, hey." You know, you don't just hail a cab. You know, it's uh it's it's a little different animal down there. So, you know, you uh probably honestly my best advice if you're going to go there and do some drinking what i would do is i would uh i would just get somebody with me and i'd be like look you know you, you're not going to drink today you're going to drive and then just take your own jeep that's how i'd do it but not to say it's a problem but you know just keep that in mind with the cruise ship port with the cruise ships being in port it may get kind of tricky to get cabs Yeah, Ron says the cabs are fine on St. Thomas. They were waiting for you at hotels. And that's the other thing. You know, you staying at the Marriott Frenchman's on St. Saint, on Saint Thomas, you'll probably get a lot of good VIP cab treatment there because, you know, you're at the hotel, very very nice hotel, very nice beach. So you'll probably get a lot of, uh, I would assume, specialized attention because of where you're staying. Yeah, I went down to... Uh, when when I when I stayed on St. Thomas, I stayed up on the on the top in this basically a basement of a house. It was like a one bedroom. Uh, it, was, it was a one bedroom. You, you can check out my. Let's see if I got a link to that video here. Let's see, million dollar view. Yeah, this is where I stayed on St. Thomas. If you're ever going there. And you're looking for something with a view, the be, probably the best view on the island that was super affordable. Yeah, that's where I stayed, and like went down the mountain and went to uh, actually went to the to the Marriott Beach a few days. I just packed a cooler and and parked at the end, just walked out there, walked down the beach like a boss with my cooler, and they never haggled me. And that little breakfast place. Uh, restaurant that's right on the beach right beside the Marriott very good you can get a really good breakfast there really good lunch I mean there's that's you're I mean you're in a great spot on on st. Thomas really good spot yep no uber that's that's interesting you would think uber would really be all over that I wonder how hard it would be to do that you know maybe maybe that'd be a good a good uh career opportunity to go down there and become an uber driver in st thomas yeah like ron said the beach at marriott super nice now there are some waves there on that side of the island it's super nice beach super soft sand you get out you know you don't have all those those rocks and coral and all that in the sand like you do at some of the other beaches Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's not legal in the Virgin Islands. It's kind of weird. If you've got streaming radio, I think it's Pandora. I don't think Pandora works down there. There's several things. YouTube worked. YouTube didn't give me any problems in the Virgin Islands. Actually, I've, I haven't had problems with YouTube in the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, French Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands. It's uh, YouTube's pretty good internationally. So yeah, we got I me. Mean, we got tons of stuff to look forward to in 2017. Hey, Sean Coonery, you want to come over here and talk to your fans? Sean Coonery, come over here. Come over here. Uh, Fred says, "What do you do for a living?" Well, actually, I do a few things. I run. Uh, well, I do a lot of startups. I run a company. I work uh, several jobs, and a lot of it is just, it's a matter of, it, it's, it's been a pretty much a process of trial and error, you know, I try to, ultimately I try to find things that, that can generate, uh, that can generate residual income, and that's, you know, not to get into what sounds like a, uh, like a, what do I say, infomercial or something like that, but I just do a lot of things concurrently. 
So, you know, if one venture is a, is a complete failure, you know, hopefully I've always got another venture or, you know, multiple other ventures that are, that are successful or semi-successful to balance out the failing other venture. So there's, you know, there's no, there's no true recipe for, um, for creating, what should I say, a sense of, uh, a sense of relaxation. You know, I, I'll tell you, I never feel relaxed because I'm always on edge. I've always got something that I'm working on. So it's, it's something I chose as a path and, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. And YouTube is one of those, one of those components. And, and something else I wanted to throw out to, uh, to my viewers is that I will be at YouTube space in New York city. So if you're, if you're in New York, in September, you know, drop me a message if you're interested in a YouTube collaboration video. I'd love to uh, potentially do a collab video uh, in the YouTube space if you if you've got access to it, or uh, Central Park or something like that. Because you know, I'm all about uh, connecting and and continuing to uh, continuing to grow this brand, this Irish Guys Adventure Channel. And it's you know, YouTube collaboration. A lot of people often assume with YouTube, it's like, oh, it's my channel and you know, I don't want to interact with any other channels. Sure, there are some channels you probably, you may not want to interact with because they may not be a good match for your content, but just the act of, of going out and finding other channels, you know, other channel hosts that, uh, that have a similar, or maybe even completely different uh, uh, set of content, you know, performing a, uh, or filming a, a YouTube collaboration video can benefit both audiences because it can bring some of their subscribers to your channel and vice versa. So it's uh, collaboration is always a good thing, in, in my opinion. Uh, Jose says, do you know about a vlogging video like, like what we're doing uh, here on this? What would you, what would you recommend for a, a vlogging camera under 500 bucks? Well, actually, and I've got a good recommendation here. Um, Shoot me a if if shoot me a message if you want to on facebook.com forward slash irix guy because it was one I was looking at the other night I don't have it in front of me right now but it's a good it's a good blend between stills and um, and video camera it looks really cool I'll shoot me a message and I'll reply with a link probably uh, probably be this evening uh, Green Knight Drone Guy says do you have much free time to fly drones etc well. You know, I try to fly as much as I can. Now, you know, keep in mind, you know, a lot of my stuff, and, you know, I don't I don't try to hide this from my fans, but a lot of the content that I film, a lot of it I have to film, you know, when I have time. So I may film a lot of stuff back to back. So I don't, to answer your question, I don't have as much free time as I would like. I mean, I've got, you know, obligation A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I've got multiple concurrent obligations, and, you know, it's hard to it's hard to find time to do everything, especially to be everywhere all the time. So, you know, it's a, a lot of the content is based upon, well, where am I going to be geographically on this day? Cause I never really know where I'm going to be. So yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot. I would like to have a lot more time. Uh, TCTC says, have you heard about the hundred foot rule that is being discussed in Washington need to be at least a hundred feet above any private property in order to fly without their permission. I have not heard about that, but that's that's in that's interesting. That is interesting. And I'm sure that's the state of Washington, not Washington DC. Um, Joe says, new to your channel, have you reviewed or got to mess with the Karma Grip? Actually I haven't. I've got a review and I've got several videos. Let me send let me share a link here uh, to the playlist. Now the, the Karma Grip for everyone that's not familiar, it comes with the, well, with the with mo, with some of the Karma bundles. It comes with the drone. Mine, I got the bundle that had the uh, the drone, the grip, and the camera. Now mine was recalled, so uh, as the product of the recall, I no longer have the Karma drone or the Karma grip. <laughs> but that's not to say the grip wasn't awesome. I like the grip, the drone, it it disappointed me despite the recall the drone disappointed me because there was that there was that fisheye present the only way to eliminate fisheye was something called linear mode 
which if you're going to film in 4K video, uh, linear mode did not work for 4K. I'm getting you that, uh, I'm trying to find GoPro Karma, here we go. So yeah, here's a link to my GoPro Karma playlist where you'll find the uh, several videos that I filmed with the Karma Grip. And it's very smooth. And it's, uh, I've had it, so there's my video playlist for Karma Grip. Also check out, and he just posted a, uh, a video in the mountains with the Karma Grip, Summertime Ken, STK's Adventure Channel. He's got a lot of Karma Grip videos. So yeah, it's it's a cool device. I like the Karma Grip. The you know the one gri minor gripe is that it's not waterproof. You know, thinking of a of a GoPro and a GoPro waterproof housing, the GoPro being waterproof is something that's a huge draw for a lot of GoPro users. But you know, at least the current model Karma Grip is not waterproof. So you know, it would be something to be used in a dry area only. So. As far as build quality is concerned, out of all the GoPro gimbals that I've used, or gimbals for GoPro rather, uh, it's the most, uh, what seems to be the most well made. Now I used another GoPro, I used another gimbal in the past and, and achieved some, some quite uh, uh, decent results with it, but you know nothing as good as the, as the GoPro Karma. And actually talking of gimbals, my next venture is, is looking for a gimbal uh, for the Sony A7R2, and this is a pretty heavy mirrorless camera, but you know, to, to imagine it on a gimbal uh, could create, you know, I, I can imagine that it may well create some phenomenal gimbal stabilized footage. But yeah, yeah, got a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff going on, and this show. Let's see, we are already, God, we're 47 minutes in. We've had a huge huge turnout and you know like I said all of these shows all of my live shows the Irix guys live show that you're watching now you can find all of these previously recorded I'll upload probably take a few an hour or so to process but once it does you'll be able to rewatch this and share with others just go to irixguy.com and uh, go to the live shows and you'll be able to uh, you know to share this with others so yeah it's a uh, super uh, super exciting stuff and you'll see there's also epic drone show which is another live show this show irix guys live show is just geared towards everything drones included and epic drone show is you know something i have for drones only so if there's big drone news brewing you know new drone coming out or big material event you know obviously irix uh, epic drone show will be all over that you can find those episodes just go to epicdroneshow.com and obviously all the drones and drone accessories you're looking for, just go to either irxguy.com or epicdroneshow.com and click the store. You go to the store and you can find everything. So if you don't see it there, you know, shoot me a message. I mean, I'm, I'm a real person. I'm not, uh, I'm not part of a multi-channel network and you know, all of this is, is my content. So uh, Ron says, if you do something like a live show in Yost Van Dyke, count me in. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a cool place to do a live show, man. Have some, uh, have some, uh, uh, I just hit a, oh, painkillers. Yeah, the drink, the painkiller. That's what's famous on Soggy Dollar. Have you used a katana for Mavic? I have not. What is, what's katana? So, yeah, we've, uh, Talked about all kinds of good stuff today. So yeah, it's uh, it is going to be fun. Yeah, I like how they do the fresh nutmeg, man. Let's put the fresh nutmeg on top of the painkiller. I've got a stack of those cups about this tall, <laughs> the little plastic ones. But. Yeah, well, I got a, I got a sunburn, man. I gotta, I gotta go rub down some aloe vera on the back, cause I got, uh, I forgot to put sunscreen on my back. My forehead's kind of burnt, 
but I got, I mean, I just got sun scorched on the back. So my body's like half hot, man. I like, I feel normal up here, but the back's just on fire. I gotta get some aloe. Green Ox says, turns a Mavic into a handheld gimbal. Very cool. You know, and that's something a lot of people don't think about. You know, you got this drone. You can use it handheld, you know, the, without the propeller spinning, obviously. But use it handheld to capture gimbal stabilized footage. That's really cool. Makes you wonder why DJI doesn't release something, you know, kind of going what with what uh, GoPro did. I mean, GoPro had a good concept. You know, we're going to put a gimbal inside of the drone that can come out and work on its own without having to have the drone with it. You think with Phantom 5 or Mavic Pro 2, we may see like a, a gimbal, a handheld gimbal type insert that can be pulled out to, uh, to use without the drone. You know, that, that'd be really neat. I think it may would put a dent in the sales of their, uh, their Osmo and their Osmo Mobile though, but you know, they, they don't know until they try, you know. So with that being said, we've got uh, you know, a, f a few more minutes here. Actually, I need to I need to run. I gotta get this aloe on. Uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in live. Hope to have another live show soon. Again, check out iRickSky.com. You can find all the previously recorded live shows, drones, uh, tutorials, and a whole lot more. And obviously, as soon as there's big drone events and other excitement, I'm gonna post a lot, host a live show so we can all talk about it. So thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day. Hey, y'all. I, Rick Sky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.